Welcome, welcome. We're down to our last lesson in Chapter Zero, the Pre-Algebra Review. And today we're going to look at how to solve two-step equations. Again, I know that you were exposed to these last year, but we are going to use it so much this year. It's really, really important that you've got it down pat before we jump into Chapter One. The goal of solving any equation is the same. It's to figure out the value of the equation, or the value of the variable, that makes the equation true. And we're still trying to isolate the variable, to get it by itself, wherever it's at. In order to do this, basically you're just undoing whatever's being done to the variable. But you know how we have order of operations in math, and it does matter what order we solve problems in? Same here. If you're trying to undo what's being done to the variable, then we're going to kind of be working backwards here to undo it. So the order that you undo it matters. In other words, let's try to help this make sense here. If you have the equation 2i plus 3 equals negative 9, right? The very first thing according to order of operations that you would do to the y is multiply 2. You wouldn't add 3 to the y first, right? According to order of operations, multiplication happens first. So the very first thing you would do to the y is multiply it by 2. The second thing that you would do is to add that 3, right? And then that is supposed to equal negative 9. So this negative 9 isn't telling you what to do to the y. This side tells you what's being done to the y. So if we're going to solve this by undoing what's being done to the variable, and we're supposed to do it in reverse order, that means in order to solve this thing, I want to take care of what happens last first. So do you remember how to get rid of a 3 that was being added to a variable? According to our 1 steps, to get rid of a number that's being added, you just added the opposite of it, right? And now I want to do what happens first, last, because it's reversed order, to get rid of multiplying the variable by 2. Do you remember what we did? We didn't change any signs. All we did to undo multiplication was divide by that. So. Basically, you are doing reverse order to undo whatever is being done. So that means in this two-step equation here, because it's going to take two steps to solve it, the first thing that I would want to do is get this 2y by itself, get rid of this 3 that was being added. And we said right here that all we need to do is add a negative 3, and that's how to undo that step. You're still doing whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other as well. So when you combine like terms on this side, 3 plus negative 3 equals 0, and 2y plus 0 is 2y. Negative 9 plus negative 3 is negative 12. Before, with one steps, we'd be done now, but there's something else happening to the variable. It's being multiplied by 2. Our second step here tells us how to undo that. We divide each side by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1y is y. And a negative 12 divided by 2 is a negative 6. So in two-step equations, it takes two steps to solve it. You're working backwards, basically. So I have some steps written for you here. Step one is always the same. I'm sure you've got a down pat now. We want to change subtraction to addition by adding the opposite. So we're going to make everything addition. That way we can use our properties, the commutative and associative properties also. Then we want to isolate the variable term by adding the opposite of the constant term. So basically, instead of getting the letter by itself, you want to get the constant, I'm sorry, you want to get the variable term by itself, meaning the number that's with the variable. That's what you want to be alone. So we're going to get rid of the constant as our step one. Then you're either going to be left with a multiplication or division equation. If you're left with a multiplication equation, then you divide both sides by the coefficient of the variable. If you're left with a division equation, then you're going to multiply each side by whatever the variable is being divided by. And, good news, you can check every single solution just like before. So let's try a few of these. And I know it seems like a lot of examples, but you see that not one of these examples is the same. I need you to understand that the variable can be on any side. I need you to understand key change change, order of the terms, and all that good stuff. So our first equation here, I have 4p minus 7 equals negative 15. And do you have to show your work? Yes, you cannot just write down a bunch of answers. If that was the way to go, these notes would be done a lot faster. I just put all the answers up and say, get it? Okay, see you tomorrow. Not how it works. All right, draw your line. Step one, change subtraction to addition by adding the opposite. Okay, step two says, isolate the variable term. That means 
I want 4p. This is the variable term because it's the term with the variable. I'm going to isolate the variable term by getting rid of the constant that's being added. And how do you get rid of a number that's being added? You have the opposite of it, right? So if a negative 7 is being added, to cancel that out, I'm going to add a positive 7. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. This negative 7 plus positive 7 is 0. And now we've isolated the variable term, right? 4p is by itself. Negative 15 plus 7, that's going to give me a negative answer, right? Because I have more negatives than positives. Subtract the digits, and we get negative 8. Now this is a multiplication equation that I'm left with, right? So it says that if you're left with a multiplication equation, all you need to do is divide each side by the coefficient of the variable. Because 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 1p is p. Now negative 8 divided by 4, 1 of each means negative, 8 divided by 4 is 2, so p equals negative 2. To check to make sure that you're right, you just plug it back in. So if p is negative 2, then 4 times negative 2 plus negative 7 should give me negative 15. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus negative 7 is negative 15. So I know that I'm right. Doesn't it feel good to know that you're right? Mm-hmm. I know. I love it. All right, next one, draw your line. Keep change, change. Remember, I'm not changing the sign of the number I start with. I'm keep, change, change. You change the sign of the number that follows the subtraction sign. This time, my variable term comes second. That's okay. There's no law that says it has to be first. So step two, I've already keep change change. That's step one. So get rid of the constant that's being added to the variable term. Negative 10x is my variable term. The negative 3 is the constant that's being added. So I want to get rid of that. All I need to do is add the opposite of it, and it goes away. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and 0 plus negative 10x is negative 10x. 37 plus 3 is 40. Now we're left with a little multiplication equation. To undo multiplication, we just need to divide. We don't change any signs because negative 10 divided by another negative 10 is what gives you that positive 1, and that's what you're shooting for. 1x is x. 40 divided by negative 10 is negative 4. And again, to check this, all I would do is go back to my original equation and see if I get the answer I'm supposed to. According to order of operations, I would need to take negative 10 times negative 4 first. That's 40. Positive 40 plus negative 3, that's positive 37. So I know that it's right. All right, next, in this one, draw your line. Keep change, change. And notice, the variable term is on the opposite side. And I told you before, that's okay. It's allowed to be on the right. There's not a law. It's, it's all good. I want the variable term isolated, though. So that means I need to get rid of this 10 that's being added. I need 10 to go away. To get rid of a number that's being added, I'm going to add the opposite of it. Because in doing that, 10 plus negative 10 is 0, and I have successfully gotten negative 3y alone. I need to add negative 10 to that side as well. So negative 5 plus negative 10, that's negative 15. I still need y by itself, so that means I need to get rid of this negative 3 that it's being multiplied by. So I am going to divide by it. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. 1y one is y. And negative 15 divided by negative 3, positive 5. And again, you would check it the same way. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Negative 15 plus 10, that's negative 5. Check. That just took a second. We didn't even write anything down, but we know that we're right. Mental math. All right, we're down to the last three, and this time we're going to end up with, it's a little bit different because we don't end up with a multiplication equation. We end up with a little division one step at the end. So draw your line, change your signs, keep, change, change. This time, my variable term is n over 5. It's not 5n, it's n divided by 5. It's my variable term, because terms are separated by addition signs, right? So this is one term. I want n over 5 by itself. The number that's being added to this is a negative 2. To get rid of numbers that are being added, I add the opposite of them. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And n over 5 plus 0 is n over 5. Negative 10 plus 2, that's a negative 8. All right, this time I need this 5 to go away, but n's being divided by it. So I want n by itself. To get rid of values that the variable's being divided by, all you have to do to cross-cancel them out 
is multiply by them. That allows you to cross cancel the fives. We're left with n. Whatever you do to one side, you better do to the other. Negative 8 times 5, that's negative 40. And we're done. To make sure that you're right, I would replace that n with the value I got for it. Divide it by 5 and add negative 2 and you should get negative 10. Negative 40 divided by 5 is negative 8. And negative 8 plus negative 2, yeah, that's negative 10. So it's right. Okay, next one, keep change, change. Okay, so... I'm taking 2 minus n over 6 equals negative 4. When I keep change, change this. When I go to add the opposite of this, when I want to change this to negative, remember, negative n over 6 means either the n is negative or the 6 is negative. I'm going to put the negative sign with the 6 because my goal is to get n by itself. Why would I put a negative sign in front of it? So when you're adding the opposite of a fraction, it means either the numerator is negative or the denominator is negative. That's the only way to get a negative result that I need. Draw your line. This is my variable term that I need by itself. I need to get rid of the 2. That means I'm going to add a negative 2. Because to get rid of numbers that are being added, you add the opposite of them. Yep, I know you've heard that a couple hundred times. <laughs> and it's still September. All right, those are gone. We're left with n over negative 6. That didn't cancel out, just the 2 did. Now over here, I need to do negative 4 plus negative 2, which is also negative 6. Okay, I'm trying to isolate this n, right? To isolate this n, I need to get rid of the number it's being divided by. That means I need to multiply each side by it. Don't change any signs. I need the same exact number in order for them to cancel out. There's n. A negative 6 times negative 6 gives me a positive 36. So n is 36. To check it, you just plug it back in and make sure we get the right answer here. So order of operations says divide first. 36 divided by negative 6 is a negative 6. And negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. So yay, we're right. Okay, finally, the last one. We have arrived. Thank goodness. Draw your line. Okay, here's the variable term. I want to get that by itself first. In order to get this by itself first, I need to get rid of the constant that's being added. I do that by adding the opposite of it to both sides. So 16 plus negative 16 is 0, and I'm left now with negative x over 3. Remember when the negative is in the middle, it means I can put it with either the top or the bottom. I recommend putting it with the bottom because I don't want a negative x. You don't want a negative x, do you? That's the worst. So let's put it with the denominator. That means the same thing. So those are gone. I'm left with x over negative 3. Now 12 plus negative 16 gives me negative 4. Subtract the digits, sign of the greater, right? I want to get rid of the negative 3 x is being divided by, so I'm going to multiply by it. Both sides, please. Those cancel, and x is alone. I'm left with negative 4 times negative 3, which is a positive 12. To make sure that I'm right. The opposite of 12 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4, right? And the opposite of 4 is negative 4. Is negative 4 plus a positive 16, 12? Yes, that means we are right. You are done. I'll see you tomorrow.